show from the call. Yes, you're in the next half hour. Anything can happen, and hopefully will, including surfing, ballroom dancing, and pot throwing. Lots, lots more, including some excellent music, Kev. Yes, and it's all live, too, and there's no one better to start us off than... Big Mark's Holy Soul Band. <laughs> He went to see What about the fruit? The man's potato The boogaloo A bone and maroni I do the twitch night time Thank you. Sun, sea, sand, it's all here. And there's another S associated with fourth call as well. Surfing. What do I know about it? Not a lot, but I know a man who does, the current Welsh champion, James Thomas. Um, well, I started in 1988, it was my first contest. Um, and that's led me up till today. Where I mean, the, I won the Welsh Championships, I won the British Championships, Student Championships, I'm sorry, and I'm ranked number three in Britain. For Gary, Chris, and myself, we, well, and people, when we watch TV, you see this image of long blonde hair. Um, <laughs> <laughs> there's, it's, it's not, it's, it's not, not essential. It's, it's not, not an image we try and cultivate. No, no. It's just the way we are, you know. You see surfers who are marines, policemen, just so happens a couple of us who got long hair. <laughs> In Porth Court, it's a social thing. You yeah. go out, you meet your friends, maybe it's, you don't see them during the week, but the only time you see them is when, when you're in the sea. You can get away from your girlfriend as well. <laughs> there are good waves in Porth Court. you just got to know where to look for them, really. Uh, it does get world class occasionally, I suppose. And uh, we've got a wide range of um, spots to go to from Rest Bay down to Coney, go to Coney Beach, and in between there's various other secret spots as well, which we surf. Um, and walking distance as well, really. Isn't it? Yeah, we're in that respect, we're lucky because it's all within about two mile radius. You're better off buying second hand to start, um, or higher is even better. Um, you can get started like with second hand board and wetsuit for probably about 150, 200 pounds. You know, that's your only cost. It doesn't cost anything to go surfing on a day to day basis, you know. And if surfing takes your fancy and you feel you'd like to have a go, then you can buy, hire, even see surfboards being made right here in Porth Corp. We get local surfers, uh, bring their boards for repair and to hire with friends. We get a lot of families who bring their children, they hire wetsuits, bodyboards. They also hire the wetsuits to take down the local lifeguard stations. So we get a mixed bunch. So we have letters almost every day from people wanting to sh learn to shape boards and get into surfing. As a rule, I don't usually employ surfers because when the surf is up, they're usually phoning sick. <laughs> Doesn't that make you just want to dive into that surf? Well, perhaps later. You look pretty cool, uh, Andy. I'm feeling pretty cool, Gwenda. Have you ever been uh, surfing at all? Well, a bit of channel surfing late at night, you know. Right, well, you've had enough uh, sitting down here enjoying your ice cream in your pop. You better go do some work now, I think. Yeah. Oh, Jeez. Oh, Jeez. Oh, Jeez. Oh, Jeez. Oh, Jeez. Is anyone over there with you, Bill? Yes. Who? My wife. Where's your wife? Oh, yeah. She's gone to the toilet. Extreme close-up. OK. Hands up. Who thinks I can't do the great escape? Oh, we're waking up now, aren't we? And hands up. Who just couldn't give a monkey's what I do? Come and stand here. 
You're doing really well. Hold the pistol by both handles. Okay, now this is the important bit. You see Bill over there? Pointed at Bill. And if I don't get out in one minute, drown him. <laughs> Big round of applause for Daniel. show you've been waiting for. This is the part of the show where Bill is going to do the countdown for you all. Uh, but before he does, can I just say one thing? I'm scared. Okay. No. Go. That's good. That's good. Keep looking, mate. Every ten seconds. Sugar. Sugar. What have you done here? Yeah. Ten. Ten. Yeah, Bill, if you could sound vaguely excited about this, okay? I know I am. Uh, yes. 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 Twenty. Yeah, Bill. Twenty! Can he do it? Twenty! Oh, I'm all sticky. Oh, oh God. Listen, I'm never going to be out of fifty. I want all of you Join in the countdown. Help Bill out. Countdown, come on. Mad antics of the one, the only, Andy Baloney. Now, antics of a different kind, because our Sue Powell Reed fancied a spot of creativity down at a local potter's wheel. Let's see how she fared. Well, Alan, you make that look so easy. Have you been doing this a long time? Well, I grew up in a family of potters. Um, I, went, I studied ceramics at Cardiff College of Art. But I came back to work with my father and my uncle about 25, 26 years ago. Pottery has been made in the Weni area from the early part of the 17th century. Most of our visitors come in the summer months, but we do get quite a lot passing through and from all parts of the world. They're able to see whatever's going on at the time. Do you think I could make one just as good as that? Yes, in time. <laughs> so I throw yeah. this on. Yes. Throw it hard in the middle. Wet your hands. Put your foot on the treble. To hold it down. Just hold right. it down. There you go. Support the clay with your hands. Yes. There we are. And then you can shape it into what shape you want. Thank you, Alan. I'll leave you now. You can practice that. Oh. Not sure that's a good idea. So are you doing, Sue? All right? Oh, fine. It's coming along nicely. Well, it's not, actually. Oh, yes. Geometric. <laughs> well, look, now it's geometrically all wrong, you see. What you need, I mean. No! No, 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 this is my little pot. I was doing very well without you. Ah, oh, that's it. Just that little bit on the top there. Right. Well, I can have a look now at some of the ones that have been done earlier. Okay. Yes, this will be among them. Don't you worry. Only time. Is this the one Sue was making? I hope not. <laughs> so how'd you get on, Sue? This is the finished product. Oh, girl. yes. If you made that, my name's Patrick Swayze. I no made way. it. I made it. Honest. Catch, Kevin. Woo! Well, the big question, did she or didn't she make the pot? What do you think, sir? Did she make the pot? I don't know. You decide and we'll be back in a bowl. <laughs> Cool stuff from that madman there. We'll be seeing more from the best shot rappers a bit later. Gwenda. Ooh, nice pod. Well, we'll be taking a break shortly, but first, if you're looking for a place to stay in Paco, you can either book into a B&B or a hotel, but why not try caravanning in one of the very large sites in the area? Come along, Arvon. <laughs> The majority of the people um, staying on the park um, own caravans. About 85% of the people on the park own caravans. The other 15% are letting vans, and they come from all over the UK. 
Uh, we get people from as far away as Scotland, Northern England, London. But um, in the main, the majority of the people are from the valley areas and from South Wales. We've geared the attractions towards families, which is what people demand in the 90s. What other Vienna sale? Yes, I hope there's not too much to be done, though. from 10 to 4 to clean 240 caravans. Some caravans aren't too bad. You know, the people that we've got coming down here now are leaving them relatively clean, so uh, it's about half an hour each van. Tell me a little about some of the funny things that must have happened. Any anecdotes of people left things or...? Taking things or set the false teeth left behind. Dead by ringing up to the mm, 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 let my heart need some man. The lady left the tin of salmon, just a small tin of salmon, tuna fish and uh, tin of beans. Tin of beans, something again, from Birmingham. And she phoned down to find out if they were still here. We had picked him up and she was debating whether to drive down from Birmingham to pick him up. <laughs> How could we force them to her? Well, I suppose the image that most people have of Port Call is the bustling holiday resort. But it hasn't always been like this, as a visit to the local museum would prove. Yes, I wonder what it was like all those years ago with no fairground, no candy floss, no roadshow. Port Call, 1825, when the horse-drawn tramway came down from the top of the Tlinby Valley, down through uh, my stake, Albert uh, Kenfick, Tondi, Kevin Kruger, and then down to the sea here. And that was then superseded by a steam railway. Eventually it was taken over the Great Western Railway, but uh, yes, our records go back to 1825. People don't realize they come here now for holidays and don't realize that what was here was an industrial port for the export of iron ore and coal from principally the Flinby Valley and then the Ogmore and the, uh, the Garrow Valley as well. And in the museum we have records of 227,000 tonnes of coal a year being exported from Port Cowell. By 1906, the last ship sailed out, and then the pleasure steamers took over. And I think the heyday of the, of the excursion trains coming into Port Cowell was certainly in the late 20s, early 30s. We have some lovely archive film of that when Coley Beach was developed as, 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 as a pleasure park. Uh, it's again regained its place as a, as a resort after the Second World War and then started to lose out with the development of overseas uh, holidays. But now, thanks to the regeneration program, it's coming back into its own, because you see, uh, the whole town is now being totally regenerated. I think it's true to say a fourth call. You have the, the eastern side where Coney Beach, built on what the residents still call Sandy Bay, um, which attracts, obviously, the holidaymakers. And when you go westwards, the whole town changes completely in character. You need to go out along beautiful Locks Common, which was totally unspotted, up to Rest Bay and then further along to the Nature Reserve at Kentvig. Like many towns in South Wales, the centre of Port Cole has seen many changes too. This is John Street. It's been pedestrianised, so I'm going to have a mosey around. Have you been coming here to Port Cole very often? 21 years. Really? What's so special about Port Cole then? Just like it, yeah. I won't go nowhere. Mm. She's been everywhere, but I don't need. Mm. Have you made a lot of friends here then? Well, no. Mm. The parents are different ones, mm. the shops and all. Don't you get bored? Mm. No. <laughs> From gift shops, fruit shops, cake shops, you name it. You can spend all your time out in Port Cole shopping. <laughs> Okay, hey guys, don't say I don't buy you anything. Come on, oh, Kevin. Hey, hey, yes. look, my very own chocolate teddy bear. Oh, That's wow. a reward. What do you it's, think, Arv? Oh, I think it's excellent. <laughs> she even left the price on, look. <laughs> well, 
No trip to the seaside would be complete without a visit to the fairground. <laughs> the penguin, please. Thank you, Arthur. Well done. Who comes here? Is it mostly people from the area? Do you get a lot of tourists from further afield? We get a lot of tourists from all over the country. A lot of people from London, Birmingham, the Midlands, from everywhere in fact. A family can come on with the grandparents, or the family tenants, they need not spend anything and just enjoy the atmosphere. We have many old age pensioners who come along and sit on the benches and watch kids, watch kids play and enjoying themselves. Where it's not costing them anything. If they want to go on a ride, they can, but they don't have to. newest attractions at Coney Beach is the Dinosaur Park, which has proved very popular for school visits. Can't wait for feeding time. Mind you, on second thoughts. There. Bit of a cop on if you ask me. Tell you what, let's speed the proceedings up again with some rhythmic rhyming from the best short rappers. Come on! This is how it should be done. Got my home boys gotta beat, and you know I gotta have fun. But if you just don't know me, then you better break it down, break it down. Slow by the letter R E P S T one E R G E E. Yep. On the mic, I do what the funk I like. Stop the beat. How am I doing? Does it sound alright? Yeah. I go for what I got to get. So don't you think I'm doing nothing that you might regret? On a new and improved tip. Quick to flip the script. Put a microphone in my hand to let the hits rip. Oh. Uh. Nothing but a groove to make you move. I rock the hard. My whole boys are cold smooth. Yeah. A taste of a different face. Slap the world in your face. face. Everybody, come on. Super funky, uh, get busy baby, do your stuff, it's super funky, uh, keep it going honey, that's right, it's super funky, uh, keep it going honey, that's right, it's super funky, uh, get busy baby, do your stuff, it's super funky, uh, keep it going honey, that's right, it's super funky. Well, we've certainly seen some dancing here today, but nothing compared to the dancing that Sue Powell Reed and I did recently. Well, to be precise, that Sue did. All I did was help with the music. What better way to spend an afternoon in Porth Call but to be here at one of the famous tea dances in the pavilion. <laughs> these dances, isn't it? These tea dances. Keep your both poor, well, everywhere, and it keeps you fit. See, you haven't got time to think, you just enjoy it. It gradually built up from a few people to the congregation you've seen today, and very often in winter time, there's even more than that, more than you've seen today. doesn't have a partner, can they still come along to these tea dances? Oh yes, yes. But there's usually more spare women than men. You <laughs> know what I mean? Trouble, that's right, yeah. Yes. That's why I bring my partner with me. <laughs> I don't mind sharing it. <laughs> We're here on Monday, every Monday, two until five. It's about one pound twenty to come in. 
So uh, a full three hour dancing session. We don't have any breaks. So we keep on dancing for the whole afternoon and we hope that everybody that comes along enjoys themselves. <laughs> Next Tuesday at 7.30, we make a visit to the Eisteddfod at Llandailo. <laughs> 